Hello there my fellow Holotable Heroes and welcome to another Conquest video guide. You will be able to find this and all my other Conquest guides on my Swag of Life website. So if you haven't seen it yet, go and check it out. There will be a link in the description below. So, one week has passed since the Conquest launched. Uh, so if you're like me, you probably by now uh, already played through all the five sectors. You've got some feats done along the way. Now you have to go back to each of the sector, finish up those feats. Uh, so in this video I want to explore what feats we can now actually farm in each sector as well as global feats on the data cron nodes uh, just to help us obviously farm some data crons, complete the feeds and we'll also stumble across some cheese teams along the way but before we get started let me actually show you the data discs that I'll be rocking in today's video uh, it's a pretty much standard I guess lineup here you got volatile accelerator amplify agony we got the ruthless swiftness as well this is going to be an important uh, data disc especially if you're using some slower uh, low gear units just that you can keep your turn meter train rolling we're going to need voluntary vanguard as well unstable decelerator and another amplify agony so this is a pretty much data this said that i've been rocking throughout uh, this run of conquest because that's what i've uh, was able to collect so let's now start off with sector one now i completed actually all the feats already in sector one so here i'll just be go heading over to the data card node versus uh, bad badge uh, so we can farm some global feats and earn some credits and data crons along the way uh, so this is the feed that actually i decided to skip this time because i thought it's going to be uh, tougher but i didn't realize they actually changed the data cron nodes and bad batch luckily they're not over prepared so they're actually not that fast so i went in here uh with my um three is it three star captain rex i did push him to uh gear 10 probably not even needed for this one because enemies they won't even be getting a turn good thing about uh, captain rex is to get it uh, to get him to gear 10 you don't need any car attack so hopefully you know it's uh, quite doable for you to get him up a little bit if you want so i did mod him for speed and there you go he's at 262 speed but then also from his unique um, he will be getting extra 25 speed and because of Hera's lead, uh, all this unique will be shared across the Phoenix squad as well. So they will all be getting 25 speed. So this was actually enough uh, to go first uh, for, I think, uh, three or three battles. Uh, and then Ezra as well, just wanted to highlight, you could mod Ezra to be faster. I didn't uh, because he's got this ability here that calls a, tar a target to assist. And if there's support, which obviously Rex is, it will grant them 40% turn meter. So if you have a fast Ezra, you don't even have to remod Rex because Ezra can then uh, feed turn meter uh, to Rex and then Rex can get going with his big AoE, landing lots of debuffs. All right, let's hop in the battle now uh, and let me show you actually how easy this is. So actually this Phoenix feed is quite uh, doable. So we're gonna start off with an AoE here uh, because we'll be landing uh, the Tenacity down and days and this will then trigger all the amplify agony that <laughs> we're getting assists because of uh, captain rex in there so you can see we are totally demolishing uh, this bad batch team so there you go i said it wasn't even necessary to get rex here to tier 10 because the enemy is not even getting a turn so even a you know level one gear one rex might be enough i don't know uh, so, you know, you don't really need to, to do a whole lot, to be honest. And there we go, got a data cron there, nice. Uh, okay, uh, so I did already uh, a couple of battles here. So now stamina is down to 80% uh, on my Captain Rex and speed here is 225. So I'm just showing you this, that you know how much speed you need on your Ezra and Captain Rex to go first. There you go, at, 20, at 225 speed, still enough to go first. And that's why we do need here Ruthless Swiftness, because then we get somebody below 100% health, feeds turn meter to the rest of the team, and then you can you just keep keep on rolling here with this squad without uh, any issues, because for this feat, you have to win without uh, any losing anybody. So now my Rex is down to 70% stamina, and now speed is 206. And as you will see, this was not enough to go first. Uh, so they go, land the days, healing immunity. I'm like, okay, let's see if we can turn this around still uh, because the other clones didn't go yet. There we go, got Wrecker down. But then they start rolling here. Uh, and as soon as I lose somebody, I'm like, fine. 
this is not gonna work will it so there you go looks like uh, you just have to have uh, your phoenix squad to be like 220 plus speed and you are good to go so actually it's a very easy and straightforward feat to farm okay so we are now in sector 2 so let me show you what feat i have remaining so i have to defeat 60 enemies with a rebel fighter units so i still have to do 39 more now luckily there is a way to get quite a lot of kills here because check out who's on the data crown node yes we have one mothma with rebel pathfinder and as long as uh, pathfinder there uh, he does have a buff on him he will constantly be reviving so we'll be able to then cheese quite a lot of kills here uh, with a certain team that i will uh, show you so let's just do the first one now so i'll just do here a mon mothma uh, with malak in there just that obviously the enemies is constantly getting feared uh, so we can then actually get a lot of heal kills with our uh, rebel fighters there's a bit of rng involved obviously uh, that pathfinder does get buffs on him so there are two ways to get that uh, he gets buffs on him so one is if whenever he's critically hit as long as chirrut is alive uh, he will be getting health uh, health over time and then then whenever you defeat him he will come back as you as i'm showing you right there and another way is when he uses his basic he as well uh, gets looks like offense up so just a case of uh, keeping cheered alive and then i just said let's try an auto i just kept auto basic here as you can see but unfortunately there didn't land the crit and he got down so a little bit of rng there but definitely as you can see not bad i got 15 rebel fighter kills with this particular team so you know it's not that bad you could probably knock this out in three or four battles so definitely nice to have pathfinder there so we can actually uh, cheese a lot of kills here now uh, we can also do the same here for um this one as well for Calcastis, Serjunda and Jedanite Calcastis fit as well. So you can see I'm still a long way to go for now. 37 out of 100. But once we go now back to this uh, Sector 2 node with Mon Moth Mine Pathfinder, uh, we again can cheese this. Now if you don't have Master Luke, you could again utilize here Malak with Volatile Vanguard to be able to cheese. And I brought in Seer uh, as well, so maybe she can get some kills. And here the idea is obviously the, again same thing you finish kill off base because he's annoying uh, and then you just uh, keep everybody else alive and you just keep hitting a pathfinder <laughs> over and over again again a little bit of rng now here uh, unfortunately Chiro there died uh, but as you can see he's still able to uh, kill pathfinder quite a few times and uh, actually revive Biston. and there we go the Pretty straightforward again as you can see here i got only four kills which is not all that great uh but unfortunately uh, uh they're cheered for me he died off quite quite early in the battle but still four kills that's when you know what you would normally do i guess with jedi master look now if you do have jedi master look this becomes even easier again same note here uh, with mon mothma uh we'll do the same thing and here we just keep calling uh Carl to an assist uh, for inherited teachings okay okay come on let's finish off base because he's annoying there we go and i will just uh keep hitting uh, pathfinder over and over again um okay they brought base back okay that's fine let's go ahead take base out for the second time uh, okay come on uh there we go let's get an assist come on finish him there we go just spitting out the footage and I just uh, keep hammering uh, their uh, Pathfinder over and over again. When Pathfinder doesn't have any buffs, if you don't want to risk it, uh, you can then just uh, randomly hit one of the other allies, but obviously without using Inherited Teachings. Uh, this is a little bit annoying here. Uh, they all get all these buffs uh, when Carl gets 30 of his stacks, but they were able to climb them off, so I can keep choosing this. Also make sure you do not target pathfinder with the basic attack from jedi master look because that lands uh, um, as well uh, buff immunity so you don't want that and there we go got him down you could actually time out if you want to save stamina but hey it's a data cron node let's pause the battle and earn some data cron material along the way so you can see i'm now up to 59 so in this particular battle i got 18 kills uh with Cal there so definitely you know this will speed up the process a lot as you can see there are still ways to get some cheese going here all thanks to the pathfinder uh, constantly reviving let's move over to sector 3 now this is probably um the sector where i had the most cleanup to do because after playing it through as you can see i'm yet to finish any of the feats 
Uh, so let's try and make some progress uh, here on the um, data core node uh, to get some of these feeds done. Uh, obviously, the, the most straightforward one, I guess, is the Galactic Republic. So we can just uh, kick off uh, with that one because we do have the global clone team. Might as well use clones here. So we get Galactic Republic battles for Sector 3 as well as the clone one for the global one. Doing power first uh, uh, to begin with. <laughs> Night Sisters are, are a bit of a handful if you don't land the days and these guys unfortunately don't have days. So if you do have Bad Batch, that would be a better option to run. But I just wanted to show you that five of us can just about hang in there with the Night Sisters. Now luckily not everybody have to survive like for the Phoenix Global Feed. Uh, so we should be able to now finish this, knock out Night Sisters. Now Bad Batch are better. Obviously do not use Omega, she's not Galactic Republic. She's only clone, um, but on that, you can just, you know, throw any other clone. I just use clone sergeant in there because I used Cody with 501 first. There we go. As soon as uh, your bad batch echo gets a turn, it's game over for them. Days, healing immunity. There we go. A couple of AoEs and they all go down. And then we have uh, the we have returned and stagger feed. So I was just doing this with Darth Malgus. Um, obviously you've got there a uh, Basti with a stagger and then just throwing in Mara she's got an AoE stagger as well just to speed up the process a bit so you can get about I don't know I think I was getting about eight staggers per battle with this particular lineup uh, so anyway while you're getting your we have returned to a feed uh, you as well knock out stagger at the same time there we go and let's go ahead and uh, get those debuffs out get some staggers and all these debuffs and amplify agony obviously Night Sisters will go down very, very quickly now at this point. There we go. Again, farming feeds. Uh, let's continue with another sector free feed, which is the Geo Kills. You can just run Malak in here. So, whenever uh, obviously he's hit, they get feared. So, then you can actually get a turn and start finishing off Night Sisters one at a time. There we go. Down for the count. Come on. There we go. Finish off Daka. Boom. So you go very straightforward here with Geos. So even if you've got like gear 12 Geos, hopefully that would work. Let's move over to sector 4 now. So here uh, I have two more feats to complete, the Imperial Troopers as well as uh, the Inquisitors. Uh, so again, we'll be farming feats here uh, on the Datacron node uh, versus Geos. Uh, so we got various uh, Imperial Trooper lineups depending obviously on what you've got. Uh, you could run it with Malak here. Uh, make sure that these guys get feared uh, so they don't steamroll you and there we go Piet got a turn in here now we get our train rolling and this is pretty much game over uh, for the geos malak kept these guys under control uh, quite easily get a couple of hits in here uh, we go we got brute down we got brute down as well and now something's a little bit annoying <laughs> with his counter attacks let's just drop an aoe you can also do actually this with a full trooper lineup uh, you could use Stormtrooper um, if you do have Voluntary Vanguard, otherwise Short Trooper as well. And obviously because uh, Pieder will be gaining so much bonus turn meter when his allies are hit, even that would be a slightly lower gear Short Trooper and defeated, uh, you can get your things uh, going. And once Pied gets a turn, you can drop the big AoE and you get your things rolling here. So there you go, full Trooper lineup as well. But I just showed you a couple of variations depending on what you've got in the roster. Whether you have Voluntary Vanguard or not. If you don't have, then Short Trooper is good because he's got a pre-taunt anyways. Uh, so that's how you can uh, knock out uh, five kills with your Troopers. If you've got Aiden as well, and you can just uh, use Aiden lead and then uh, leftover troopers uh, that you didn't use with Veers. So you can really speed up the process here of getting this Imperial Trooper feed done. Uh, there we go, we got 100% turn meter uh, over on Aiden. Even low gear Aiden there would do, uh, because obviously all the damage is coming from Amplify Agony anyway. So there we go, got these guys down as well without any problems whatsoever. And we've got the Inquisitors, obviously depending on what you've got, you can get this done with standard Inquisitors as well. Uh, Ninth Sister, uh, whenever uh, she's there critically hit, obviously uh, Seventh Sister can gain bonus turn meter. And then you can just uh, get that going, take a couple of attacks in there. I'm just gonna go ahead here and I uh, uh, guess we could heal up, yeah let's go ahead and do that. And now we can finally get things going, a couple of AoEs, and because of Amplify Agony, all these debuffs uh, we are dishing out. I mean, these guys don't really have a chance, to be honest. 
Uh, now, unfortunately, all my uh, Inquisitor heroes are relic up, so I don't know what would be the minimum, minimum, I guess, gear requirement in order for this to work. Okay, so we're down in sector 5, uh, not on the data crown node, however, but on a hux node, because it's time that we cheese uh, blinds here on autoplay. Uh, so it's a, pretty, it's a pretty similar strategy as obviously in the one of the videos where I showed you where you can cheese armor shreds with Sabine. So just first knock out Hux so you can start gaining a bonus turn meter and then you finish off the other guys and then you just hit it on full auto and you can get quite a lot of blinds uh, this way. There we go, let's go ahead and get, those, uh, get a taunt off uh, Kylo. Now we can finish off the other guys, finish off Phasma as well. And I'll just hit full auto, I'm just spinning other footage. This will time out, but obviously it will still count. And then obviously 3P on Chewie, every three turns, I believe, uh, he will be applying uh, blind. So not sure how many you can get this way, maybe, I don't know, 20 or so uh, per battle. So maybe in a free free battles, you can get this knocked out. Now we go, now game has to process all this damage over time, I guess we applied and everything. So I'm like, don't crash. Don't crash. Come on, you got this. <laughs> you got this. Come on. Come on. Come on. There we go. We timed out. Uh, that's okay. Uh, you know, the blind feed uh, will still count for all the blinds you applied. Okay, so we also have that Wookiee global feed to do. Uh, so I just wanted to uh, show you what data kernels my Wookiees were able to defeat. So let's first start off here in sector 4 uh, versus Geos. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Wookiees are really fun to use, to be honest. I thought it's going to be much more difficult, but Tarfuglid actually is not that bad at all, even at low gear. He does the job. There we go. Uh, we get our, our train rolling now because of Ruthless Swiftness uh, data disk, and we just go ahead and finish these guys off. And now I inserted here Zalbar and Kersantan because uh, in the previously I was using 3PO uh, and Chewie and OG Chewbacca. Uh, but I just wanted to show you they're not necessary because you know you need them for other feats uh, as well. Doesn't even matter. Let's go ahead here. Sector 3 versus Night Sisters. I didn't know would this work or not because obviously Night Sisters are a little bit annoying. Uh, but luckily with Zalbar in there, he took a couple of hits for us to begin with. And now just a case of us getting a turn here. Uh, I'm not sure why Tarful completely healed up there. Um, I don't know entirely his kid, but. I guess there's something in there <laughs> that heals him up. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and uh, finish off Mary and Daka so we get the revives out of the way. And now just to finish off the remaining two sisters here. Drop an AoE. Come on, damage over time should finish them off. And there we go. All right, and as well, let's go to Sector 1. Uh, I tried Wookiees here as well, and they worked also. So the only tr two I guess I couldn't knock out, I believe, was Sector 2. Uh, and Sector 5, those ones were more challenging, but these other data nodes uh, are okay. And anyway, I don't I don't ever farm, to be honest, Sector 5, uh, just because I think there is just, uh, is it the reroll mats uh, that I don't need that many. I really mostly need credits uh, and then as well Mark 2, uh, that's what I farm the most. So as long as uh, I can get the, here the Sector 1 data node and sector 3 and 4, that's all I really need uh, in terms of data crown farming for myself. So Wookiees getting the job done in all these three sectors that I would need them to work. All right, guys, hopefully this video was useful and helpful. Just showing you, uh, you know, how to farm uh, different feats uh, in each sector and earning some data crowns along the way. And also highlighting there is some cheese potential uh, there in sector 2 versus Mon Mothma. Uh, and Pathfinder to get a lot of kills in there, both with Rebel Fighters for Sector 2 feet, as well as as well as for Cal and Seer feet also. Thank you for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. But until then, have fun, enjoy life, and may the RNG be with you, my friends.